talk about uh, subjects that are near and dear to our heart. Uh, I'm a massive fan of you and your That's nice of you comedic say. stylings. Thank you, Conan. I'm um, a massive fan of yours. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I am. I just, wow. There's no other way to do that. It was an ill-timed. <laughs> wow. Because um, you, you, uh, your. Um, oh my god. Who said? Oh my god. Was that you? No. I was drinking water, and I'm not that. But you're a very good ventriloquist. Uh, you talk about so many themes that I can relate to, and I'm not going to mention any specific projects because we're not doing that now. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. But I've seen you uh, live many times, and so many times you so beautifully and perfectly and hilariously capture things that I talk about. And one of the things that you've talked about some is when you grow up in families like ours. Uh, in birth order, the need for attention and the things mm -hmm. that you will do to get attention. 100%. And I was watching your, um, you know, just you being very hilarious about the things you would do and your jealousy of other people that got attention in weird ways. And I have a, I was listening to this and thinking, I've got to mention this to John. When I was a kid, I desperately wanted attention. Middle child, didn't think I was getting it. And in class, we read the book, Death Be Not Proud, uh -huh. which is uh, a true story of the author's son's battle with brain cancer. So it was the writer who wrote um, Travel, Travels of Europe and yes. Travels of USA. He had two yes. books, yeah. And uh, he, uh, Gunther? John Gunther. Yeah. And it's the story of his son battling brain cancer. And I remember reading that book and being jealous of, and the kid loses the battle, for sure. dies. And I, I w read the book and I remember thinking, that guy got at so much attention. Oh my God. And it was like, <laughs> yeah. I, now do you understand that? 1,000%. Thank you. What the Thank you. I, I remember telling my mom exactly what I wanted at my funeral. And her, I, I had no illness. Right. And she said, well, you know you're not gonna be there to see it all. And I was crestfallen. <laughs> I still can't get over that. That I wasn't gonna get to see people listen to all the songs I picked and have the speakers come up, say what a good person I was. God damn. Can you imagine? <laughs> I remember that, and I also remember going to mass with my whole family, and my grandmother came with us. And I mentioned this to you guys the other day, but I have to say this in front of John. And so I don't know how old I am, I'm like 11 or 12. And I just feel like I'm lo I'm just this red-headed, round-faced, freckled blob, just lost in the sea. Like, no one's looking at me. So. And my grandmother was with us who was ancient, ancient. She was born in 18, I think she was born in like 1890. So, and uh, you know, I think she, I think she was the person who shot Teddy Roosevelt when he was giving a speech. <laughs> oh that was her claim to fame. But he- Best Dude. political mic drop ever. Thank you, yeah. Bull yeah. Moose Party speech. Yeah, get shot. I don't shot. think you realize I've been shot. Everyone laughs. He goes, no, 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 look, look. And he opens his Oops. jacket and his oh glasses God. case stopped the bullet. Wow. And then he continues the speech. Wow. So today that would be, okay, just be president. Let's yeah. stop fucking around trying to find someone else. Uh, anyway, my grandmother's with us. We're all there in church, and then there's the part where you go up and take communion. And I got out, and I uh, feigned a limp. I, I knew faked, you were going to say that. I faked a slight limp going up the aisle and took my communion, and then ma did my limp on the way back and sat down. And my grandmother leaned over and she said into my ear, "Are you lame, boy?" <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "I'll be fine." Bravely, it was all bullshit. Wow! Because I needed to pop in that moment, How and I wasn't of that popping. Is responsible for your success? That that drive. my fake limp? No, just that's that, how. That that's why need. Lauren gave me late night. <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm concerned about his limp. Maybe a little late night experience. <laughs> Lauren, Lauren cast him in. <laughs> Lauren was directing Richard the Third and gave him the lead. And then from that, uh, <laughs> from Richard the Third, he said, "You want to write the late night show?" And he said, "What if I host it?" What if I host it? Everyone yeah. was so busy that it happened. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone was busy. Yeah. That's kind, why. That part's kind of true. Yeah, it's a little bit. Everyone is true. That actually is true. <laughs> I remember one year I told everyone in school that my dad was Mark Summers, the host of Double Dare. Whoa. And I would say these things, then I'd forget about them. Right. And then people would meet my dad and be upset. And then uh, I would go to school and say that our house burnt down the night before just to get just to get any traction. Yes. It was just wow. about getting a little eye contact no, and no, no. a little conversation we're, going. We're not... I don't know about you. I'm not defending any of this behavior. And oh, this good. is this is uh, sad, tragic behavior. I am just that when I've 
until John said these things in his stand up, I felt, well, I can never admit to this, but then uh, a very well liked professional uh, comedian and voice of the voice of youth said the same thing. And I thought, I'm, now I can talk about this. Mm. Now I can say that. Um, one of the happiest days of my life is when I shattered my elbow and had to be put in a cast. Wow. And they brought me, Jeez. they because they, a kid in school, uh, we were fooling around and a kid jumped up on top of me and I fell back and put my arm back Ooh, and it bent a completely. A separate style. Yeah, the wrong way. <laughs> and they put me in what was like a 1920s comedy cast. <laughs> You know, today it would be like microsurgery yeah, yeah, and then yeah. like a tiny. They put me in a cast that was made of a plaster that they Did used. Did it have the stick going? From it didn't the have the stick. I wanted the stick. <laughs> Trust the stick me. going from forearm to rib. Yeah, yeah from That's forearm the to rib. Yeah. Thing. Yes. Yeah. Because you wonder the if there's even anything in there if it's just all plastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had my real arm tied behind me yeah. and then I had a fake cast with a stick. Uh, uh, no, but I. And I remembered. Uh, my, they gave me uh, medication, and I remember thinking, this feels, I feel amazing. I have an incredible yeah, sense of well-being. And then I have this cast on, and they took me home, and they put me, I lived up in the attic. They put me in my, <laughs> in the central, they put me on oh the second God. floor. Oh wow, second, second floor, and then floor status. Christmas, <laughs> Christmas was coming soon. Christmas was coming soon. So my parents brought out gifts for me. This was like December 18th. And then all my brothers and sisters gathered around and I thought, I hope this arm withers. Yeah. <laughs> I hope this arm never heals. I am so curious, talent aside, because this is the talent side of the table, how much of that drive? He just gestured to yeah. John. Thanks. I just I, want, no, I did a, Yeah. I, <laughs> oh. I just say. What I saw was a. <laughs> you right. pushed in. And then you scooped towards John. I, I took your small portion and I just hedged my bets over here. How much of that is your drive? Because, you know, every kid dabbles in that. We dabbled in, in attention seeking. But I think at a certain point you go, OK, I got to be realistic here. But you continued on. <laughs> How much of that drive is responsible for where you guys are very successful? I'm just yeah. curious. What? Uh, well, you why don't you take this, John? Well, I don't know. Because there's because obviously talent, but what what chicken or the egg? What gives you the talent, the need to, like you workshop your talent for a need for attention, or you have the talent? How did well, it go? it's like if you have the need for attention, the drive for attention, and then you have the delivery device of entertainment. Um, Which comes first? That's why I think not everyone does it. Maybe yeah. some people didn't just love entertaining and show business as much. Well, there you. I mean. <laughs> I was always mystified by kids that didn't want to be in entertainment. Yeah, oh. Mystified. Me too, and also... I'm still mystified by people that don't want to be comedians. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually still quite confused by why people don't want to be comedians. I'm not, I'm not remotely kidding. But also... <laughs> I don't understand. You, it's you openly mock the, the guy that made, like, the Hubble Space Telescope. <laughs> that thing? That's no good. <laughs> you look it was... in it, you just see your eyelashes. <laughs> You look in the viewer, it's all eyelashes. That thing stinks. <laughs> Do you have a friend with a telescope and they make you look at, they go, you can see Saturn tonight. And I, yeah. You I, look in, you see your own eyelashes. Yeah, I do. <laughs> and then when they finally show it to you, it's like a dot and you go, oh, okay. And a guy, one time this happened, the guy said to me, what did you think it was going to be? I go, I'm embarrassed to say what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> and he's like, did you think it'd be a ball with rings around it? And you'd see that through the telescope? I said, yes, yes, absolutely. That's the whole reason for having a telescope. I, I can I, go online yeah. and look at an amazing photo of Saturn. I don't need to come over to your house and you serve this shit wine. <laughs> and now I'm supposed yeah. to look at my eyelash and then a dot. Yeah. And by the way, that's not guacamole. If there's not onion in it, it's not guacamole. <laughs> wow. I'm getting very specific. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Wow. Anyway. The Hubble's crap. Anyway, it's no people that know about that stuff know it's crap. But yeah. I, I know to the public it was, it's a big to Look, the new telescope, the Webb telescope, now that's the winner. The Webster Hubble telescope. Is it Webster? <laughs> okay. Who was Webster Hubble? Is that Reagan Bush? What is that? What is that name? That reference? Webster Hubble. It's a person. I don't know that it is. Okay. And I think you should maybe go. I, nobody look at me. Attorney General. Under? From 1993 to 1994. Oh, Bill that's Clinton. 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 Never mind. Never mind. Incredible. Yeah, I'm not going to say that you brought us on an unproductive cul-de-sac. 
<laughs> but I am going to say you're insisting. You know what's good about a cul-de-sac? You can drive right out of it. We know who Webster <laughs> Hubble is now. <laughs> you know what I mean? What bothers me is that when you entered the building, the name Webster Hubble was written on your hand as if work this in. <laughs> yeah. right. That's the part that concerns me. And we still haven't even gotten to see Everett Coop. <laughs> <laughs> I love that beard. Yeah. What a great whaler he was.